my gosh, fourth grade, that was awesome. Did you see that? Hot Wheels, a real live Hot Wheels car went down the ramp and made the jump. Unbelievable. I'm Mr. Light, and today we're gonna to figure out how that happened. What's all the science that goes in to making that car make its jump? I gotta tell you, I loved Hot Wheels when I was a kid. Maybe you did too, uh, but we're gonna be using some things to investigate all the different things in science that we need in order to make that happen. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to take out a sheet of paper, and I want you to watch that video again. And you can rewind this if you need to, but watch that video, and I want you to write down anything that you notice what are some things, observations that you can make about what they needed to do in order to make that car hit the jump? What were some variables, things that they had to change or keep in mind in order to make that jump happen? Take a couple of minutes and write down any observations or notices that you had uh, in watching that video. I'll give you some time. What were some of those things that you wrote down? Were you concerned about the height of the track? Like how high they had to go when they started? Maybe, I don't know. What about the type of track? Does that make a difference? The angle of the jump, the distance that the jump had to be before they hit the, the landing pad. All these things are variables that they had to keep in mind. They had to test all of these variables in order to make sure that the jump's gonna perform exactly like they wanted it to jump. Uh, they have to be extremely careful when they have a human life in the car. They want to make sure that uh, all of their science is done and all of the engineering is done in creating the ramp. So what I want you to do now is I want you to think about what are some questions that you have about that jump? What are some things that you think we should investigate in order to figure out what are the important variables, the most important variables, in making the car go the speed that it needs in order to make that jump? Take some time right now, I'm gonna give you some time, and write down three or four questions that you have about that jump. Okay, now that you have some questions, it's time to start investigating some things. I've gathered lots of things that I could find just around like labs that might work towards this investigation. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as you have some really basic things. We're going to need some kind of a car. Now I have some Matchbox cars that I found. Um, I have lots of different varieties of them. Uh, I also found this bigger car here and even this giant car here. It doesn't really matter what kind of a car that you have. Uh, if you have some kind of thing with wheels, uh, that will make sense. The other thing you're going to need is you're going to need some kind of a ramp. Now, I've got all kinds of different ramps here. Uh, really, the best ramp I could find was this. This is what it was made for, right? The actual Hot Wheels ramp. But you don't need a Hot Wheels ramp. I uh, picked up a board. That will work just fine as a ramp. Uh, if you don't have a board at home, uh, I even have some cardboard. That will work. You can just take a box and cut off the top of it to make some cardboard, or even just a folder, if you have a folder uh, that you would use maybe for school. Any of these things would work for a ramp. So we're gonna need that, and then we're also gonna need something to measure the distance. In science, we're gonna have to take some data. Data is information that we wanna write down so that we know that the claim that we make, the conclusion that we make, is valid, okay, or makes sense. So we gotta write out some data. So you need something that will measure. A tape measure will look work really well. I have a, a big long tape measure here. I don't think you need one nearly this long, but this is all that I could find. I also have a, a meter stick uh, in science. A lot of times we use the metric system. Uh, on the other side, it has inches. Uh, if you wanted to use inches, that's okay today. You gotta go with what you have. So you're gonna need to gather some of these things, a ramp, a car, and something to measure with. Okay, and then we can start our investigation. Go ahead, go grab some of those things, and then we'll get going.
Okay, here we are on the floor of the Donald A. Schaefer Planetarium. I've got uh, all of my equipment here that I think I need for this first experiment. So what do I need? I'm going to need a track. I got my green track here. I've propped it up with a couple of books. Uh, I have some kind of a measuring tape and I, I took my purple car. I noticed that the purple car tended to go a little easier down the track than maybe some of the other cars that I have. So before I do the experiment, I need to write down all the variables that I want to keep the same. Every time I do an experiment, I only get to change one thing. So we better take some time to write those down. Okay, before we do our experiment, we need to write down all of the things that we need to keep consistent in every experiment that we do. So what are some things that we want to keep constant in our experiment? What are the constant variables, the things that are not going to change when we can continue to do experiments all week? Well, one thing that I think I want to keep the same is the car. I noticed that the purple car worked a lot better on the green track than some of the other cars that I had. So I'm going to write down purple car. Purple car, green track. That's kind of the setup uh, for my experiment. I'm going to run the purple car on the green track every single time. What other things did I keep constant and I should keep constant in all my experiments? Well, one important thing is probably the surface that the car goes on when it's off the track. I use the planetarium carpet. We better write that down. So every time I do an experiment in this, I want to use the planetarium carpet with the purple car on the green track. If I switch cars, that might make a pretty big difference. Or if I ran the car across some concrete or some linoleum, it might go a lot farther or not as far. So I want to keep the planetarium carpet every time. Now in this experiment, I released the car the same way every time. I didn't push it, I just let it go. And I let it go from five centimeters I had to measure. So I'm going to write down the height equals five centimeters. These are probably the important things that I have in my setup for my experiment. Be sure you write down all of the important things that you're going to keep consistent in your experiment. Go ahead and take some time to do that. When we get back, we'll actually run the experiment. Okay, so now we're ready for our first run. I'm going to take my purple car and take him down the track. Let's see how it goes. Awesome. Now what data should I take? How am I going to know if that's the distance that it goes all the time? Well, first off, I'm going to need to measure that distance, right? I've got a meter stick here that I'm going to use to measure mine. Mine uses centimeters because that's what science typically uses. But if you have inches in a tape measure or something like that, that would be fine. The key to all of science is that you're consistent. You do the same thing every time. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay my meter stick right here from the end of the track and measure how far it goes. Now, if I look at this car, it's got all kinds of things. Do I want to measure from the front of the car, the back of the car, the middle of the car? How do I know how far, what do I want to measure? Does it matter? Or can I just be consistent? As long as I do it the same way every time, my data will be good. I'm going to measure from the front of the car. This one looks like it's about 41 centimeters. Okay, now that we've run the experiment, I need to write down my data. So we do that in what's called a data table. Now you look here in my data table, I have three columns that I set up. The first column is for a trial. This is uh, which time I did it, and I ran it one time so far. The second column, I put the height. Now, I know that I put the height up here as five centimeters, but I wanted to show that it's going to be the same every time. You'll notice that in my data table, I did put the units, centimeters, right here. I put that up in the heading of the table. That way I can just write five down here, and people can pay attention to the numbers, knowing that they all have the same units. Now, the variable that I 
tried to uh, investigate was how far did it go. We call this the dependent variable, the variable that's going to change every time we run the experiment. So that would be the distance that the car moved. So I have distance in centimeters, and my car moved 41. So this is the first experiment uh, that we did. Now, do you think if I released the car again, it would go exactly 41 centimeters? Let's find out. Now that we did one trial, can we be sure that it's going to go exactly 41 centimeters again? Let's find out. That time, it only went about 37 centimeters. So which one's right? How are we going to know if 41's the right answer or if 37's the right answer? Remember, we need to be consistent. I didn't change anything. How come it didn't go the same distance? Well, there's a lot that goes into this. There's how it comes off the track. There's the different bumps on the uh, carpet as it goes. So how are we going to know which one is right? Well, in science, what we do is we do a number of trials. You do it over and over again, and as long as the car goes pretty close to where it was before, then your experiment's probably pretty consistent. So you take all those numbers from all those different trials, and you can average them, or figure out about in the middle uh, where it should be going. So I'm going to take my 37 and write it down as trial 2. Then. I'm going to try it again is trial three. This one went about 38. And you'll notice that time it kind of curved off to the side. I wonder if it's going to do that all the time. I'm going to write down 38 and try it again. Ooh, that one went to about 42. So how many of these do I need to, go to do? Well, in science, a lot of times we do somewhere between three and five. If you have a big experiment, you might do thousands of trials just to make sure that your data is good. Let's do five. Go ahead and do your experiment five times and write down all five trials on your piece of paper. So you can see in my experiment that all my numbers look pretty good. I've got 41, 37, 38, 42, and 40. Now if I had one that was really messed up, like 10, well, we would call that an outlier. Something probably happened. Maybe it came off the track and turned sideways really bad or something like that. So we would maybe ignore that kind of thing. We want to make sure that all of our trials are consistent. If they're not consistent, we need to figure out what's wrong with our experiment and then do more trials until we can get something that's fairly consistent. Now it's time for you to perform your experiment. Go ahead and set up a track like mine. You can use anything you want for a car, anything you want for a track, as long as you're consistent, and then run your trials to see if you can get a consistent setup. This is going to be very important tomorrow when we start to measure other variables and see what happens to the distance when we start to change things. Doing investigations to figure things out is what scientists really do, and it's one of the reasons I really like science.